way down in the hole. Sometimes you're up at top of the hole, looking down in it, and going, man, I'm glad I'm not in there, and sometimes you're down in there. And oftentimes I think we're more in there than we think. <laughs> Exodus thirty three seventeen. Yet the children of your people say, The way of the Lord is not fair, but it is their way which is not fair. When the righteous turns from righteousness and commits iniquity, he shall die because of it. But when the wicked turns from his wickedness and does what is lawful and right, he shall live because of it. Yet you say, The way of the Lord is not fair. O house of Israel, I will judge every one of you according to his own ways. Now, I don't know, a couple new things were popping out about that today, this morning. Um, one, there's something really firm in there about uh, obedience and about how to walk consistently in obedience is a huge and vital and important thing. And again, it must be a quotidian operation to offer yourself up and surrender to God to your Messiah and to walk in knowledge of that is a, is a great and powerful and gorgeous lovely thing and I'll talk about extra why in a second but so then the righteous who is walking in righteousness has been granted knowledge of righteousness you know and therefore to turn from that which God has given you to do is to literally uh, disobey in some ways kind of disobey a direct order if you will and death follows for those who disobey direct orders but for those again who aren't conscripted into the army of the Lord and are walking in, in darkness or in shame or in whatever they're walking in and they turn and commit righteousness and God often says that there's no righteousness without him they commit righteousness of God and with God and by God by God by golly then then is there not life in that is there not an amazing new obedience and in that moment of obedience in that in that moment of surrender in that moment of mercy then life the not only the seed but the very like practicum of life is is borne out I guess the other thing that was striking my brain was as this applies to a sort of post covenantial uh, uh, God a post Christ God then I feel like there's something to examine here that indeed if the righteous commits Iniquity. There's a little, even if this isn't literally what they're saying, there's something nice to be heard and seen here. That ultimately, by God's language, none of us are righteous. We are all wicked. We all are heading towards death. We all struggle uh, with death. And I sometimes feel, for me personally, like the revelations the revelation of Christ, of Jesus in my heart, which, and I know it for those who don't understand that language, it may sound strange, but that is like, just the best way to say it, I guess, is that it really is a is an opening and it's an awakening in yourself that I didn't like muster, and I didn't like fight my way to, but I was found in, that sometimes in, in, in the hard times, it's almost like a, a schizophrenia, <laughs> where you've like got your iniquitous self, your sinful self. I am a sinful person. I'm a sinner. I'm callous, slothful, lazy, mean, selfish. But since Christ is settled in my heart, uh, he plies my conscience or plays my conscience like a liar. He plies his trade of salvation of mercy, of calling you out of darkness with a with a vigor that is like uh, r resurrection. Sometimes every day, sometimes in from moment to moment, it can it can change. But we are all 
steeped in iniquity. I am steeped in iniquity. And my natural self clings to death, clings to dust, wants no part of eternity, because in a way I feel like I don't deserve anything but condemnation. But the, the bright love, for God so loved the world, for the bright love of God, transforming my heart more and more to one of love, a stumbling one of love, I'll tell you that much. It's a, it's a, it's a, I'm wrought with failure. But I'm consoled by my creator, which is a fantastic feeling, I've got to tell you. And so every time I turn again to obedience, I am again seeing life. I am again choosing life. I am again being chosen by life. And even in stumbling and struggle, there is something so restoratively brilliant about that, that it can carry me through... Uh, and has carried me through the, uh, the darkest of days. You know, the darkest of stumbles. Forgiveness is, a, is, is perhaps, forgiveness is God's most powerful weapon. I'll go ahead and just say that today. Some other day I might say another most powerful weapon, and you can totally call me on it. <laughs> Alright, that's far. That's way past the time I was going for, but whatever. Amen. Blessings to all. Amen. Selah.